Welcome to New Hope in Christ. I hope you enjoy this message and have a blessed day. Hi, Pastor Mike Mestis here. Just uh, my wife Josie and I, we pastor New Hope in Christ. 401 East 58th Avenue at I-25 and 58th in the Comfort Inn Conference Room. Today I wanted to uh, talk to you about fruitfulness. And in speaking to you about fruitfulness, how do we, as children of God, become fruit bearers? What's your process? What does the Word of God say about this subject of being a fruit bearer? I want to turn today to Galatians chapter 5, and I'm going to read verses 22 and 23. And the Word of God says this, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and against such there is no law. So what the Bible is telling us is that when you operate in this fruitfulness and you utilize this list, that uh, we have here, the nine lists, uh, the nine of the list, it tells you that uh, you're pretty much clear of every issue. There's no law. In other words, you're not under any kind of bondage or burden or uh, animosity. Nothing holds you down or back. Number one, it talks about love, and that is agape love. What's agape love? That's brotherly love. So when you function in brotherly love, that means that uh, you love your person or friend, uh, I, uh, individual that's uh, along your side with agape love. The second one is joy or kata or gladness is what it means. So uh, when you have this fruitfulness of joy, that means that you live life with a glad heart. And it's evident in uh, you and your life and how you function as a child of God. The third one is peace. And uh, Erin is peace. And basically it's just harmony. Harmony is like uh, being one with your fellow man. Being one in uh, issues. You're not uh, rattled and uh, dis <clears throat> I'd say you're not distracted. You just have that harmony. And uh, in that, uh, a peace that is in individuals, and it's a peace that comes through salvation. That's how uh, a child of God operates in the fruit of the Spirit. The fourth one is long-suffering. What's long-suffering? What's simply makrimaya. Uh, and uh, what that is, is just, it's a patience. You have an endurance and a perseverance. So when you suffer long, you become or are a patient person. When you suffer long, you endure and you also have endurance in other words you can go with it for quite a while and that's what this fruitfulness is and of course it's perseverance it's kind of like towing the line without giving up or giving in but being constant consistent and long-suffering the fifth item is kindness Restosis. And uh, what it is, is kindness is just a moral goodness and integrity. So when you put uh, morality and goodness together, you have an integrity. Integrity is something that you walk in, but to a degree you earn it because of the life you live. When you live uh, under these guises of uh, the uh, 
fruit of the Spirit, you have this kindness that just pours out of you. It, uh, it just begins to become an item that, um, it, I guess you could call it wherewithal. And uh, wherever you go, it's with you, and all of you is expressive in this kindness. The sixth one out of the fruit of the Spirit is goodness. And it's agrastosien. And uh, what that is, is uh, it's an upright of heart and life. And what you are simply is your kind. I know of quite a few kind people that walk in this goodness. And uh, they just have an upright heart. What does that mean? That uprightness or that upright heart really is expressive in a person when they're uh, living a righteous life. And uh, this ability to be able to, uh, to have such a goodness that uh, your life operates in kindness. You have a gentle spirit, uh, an ability to be able to just flat out be a good person and not uh, angry, not uh, giving way to uh, any kind of negative, but you're a positive person. That's part of that fruit of the spirit. And the seventh one, which I think is really important, is faithfulness, feasties. And uh, what faithfulness is, faithfulness is a conviction of the truth. And uh, what it does is faithfulness is uh, telling the world God exists. You as a faithful person, you walk in this uh, very valuable asset uh, that uh, it just is exuberating out of your spirit. And people begin to look at you and say, man, a person like you shows me that God is real. That's pretty much what faithfulness is, which is a very powerful fruit. And uh, the eighth one is gentleness. And what gentleness simply is, is reotes. And uh, gentleness is a mild and meek operation out of a person. What's mild? Is, mild is a person that doesn't get rattled and meekness is someone that gives way to the right things. And when people come up against you, you just know how to give way, but yet be righteous and right. It's uh, an item that uh, really is expressive of uh, a good-hearted soul. And uh, the ninth one is self-control. Self-control, uh, Egrateria is uh, somebody that masters his desires and masters his passions. When you master your desire and passion, that means that you're not swayed by emotional fervor or uh, an action going uh, off in front of you, but uh, you're able to pull back, sit solid, and not give way. Galatians 5.25 says it best. I want to read that to you. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Living in the Spirit is uh, living in these nine gifts of the fruit of the Spirit. Living in love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and control. And walking in it as well living and walking the fruit of the Spirit. So when you operate in the fruit of the Spirit, you're actually living it. And when you live it, that means that wherever you go, you're walking in it. And people recognize it, and people draw to it, and people love you for it. A very, very powerful value that God brings out. And in Galatians 5.26, it says this, Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, 
or envying one another. <clears throat> Important. In other words, the downside is conceit. Conceit is just uh, being self-indulging and uh, selfish. And uh, a provocation is someone that starts trouble, someone that provokes another person to respond in a negative way to you. See, you being a person of the fruit of the Spirit, people sometimes will try to provoke you into getting riled up and to become like they are. And that final one is envy. Envy is uh, just wanting something that someone else has or desiring to have it and having a bad motive inside of your spirit about it. Very uh, heavy thought when you think of it. And uh, where is it that you find the fruit of the Spirit? I want to turn to Ephesians chapter 5, and I want to look at verse 9. Ephesians 5, 9 says this, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Goodness is an upright heart and life. When you, when you walk in that upright heart and life, that means that you're above the fray. You're not going to involve yourself in those negative actions that others may be living and walking in and trying to pull you in. But this is because you're one of the fruit of the Spirit, you're good. And uh, with that goodness is expressive of an upright heart and life. The third thing in that scripture is a righteousness. Simply said, righteousness is a condition that is acceptable to God. A condition that is acceptable to God. Your life, your walk, your uh, spirit is acceptable to God. And it's expressive in all of you. Everything you do, people see, man, that's a man or that's a woman of God. I really desire to be like that. I pray, I wish that I wasn't that the way I am. And I wish I was like brother or sister so-and-so. And the final fact in all of this is truth. Simply said, the truth is fact and certainty. Fruit being fact and certainty is just simply moral and religious activity in your life. You're a moral and a religious person. When I say religious, I mean that you're one that practices truth. You're one that walks in this uh, fact and certainty. Nothing can uh, steer you away from it and nothing can veer you off. You are so confident and so full of the fruit of the Spirit that you operate in all these gifts. What a great uh, uh, thought when we look at what God said about that fruit and the fruitfulness that we need to walk in. I encourage you, study Galatians 5, 22 through 23, and, and also reference Ephesians chapter 5, verse 9. Two powerful, powerful words of truth. And I think it really will help you to learn to how to become fruitful. God's calling us to be fruitful. God has made us a plant connected to the vine, and he wants us to exude fruit of the Spirit. I hope that helps you today, and I hope it uh, uh, brings you to a place and position where you can uh, begin to operate and live this pattern and this life of fruitfulness. God love you today. I pray that the Lord just keeps his hand on your life and encourages you through your difficult times and causes you to be fruitful. Be blessed. This is Pastor Mike Mestis saying good night.
and God bless you.